or so Renzinha asks, do you use more flat brushes or textured? Um, I would say more flat brushes. Now, this is not something that I will say there's a hard, harder, like, soft rule when it comes to that. It's basically what your your style is. I like using flat brushes because a lot of times texturing is only you done like maybe later in the piece. So like for the majority of it, you're trying to establish the foundation of your piece. You're most likely just going to use simple brushes. So flat brushes are round, like I guess like just non-textured brushes. Uh, yeah, a lot of people get into the mistake of just putting too many textures and then it ends up just being a cluster of random stuff. So, don't want to swear, but yeah, it, you know what, you know what hit the point where it, you, you just use a ton of different textures and it just becomes a mess. So, it has to be a balance. Um, and I tend to lean towards flat brushes, but that's not always the case. Uh, Sometimes, like, if I'm really feeling experimental, I'll just use more textures, but again, I, I'm very cautious of that, just because it, it, can, it can go haywire pretty quickly. Um, that's, uh, I was muted before, so don't worry about that. Um, how do you improve your color vision? Guns and horns uh, from what? the Discord chat. Traditional materials. So that's two very different things. So color, color vision, um, there's actually exercises uh, for you to improve your uh, sense of color. Um, primarily, you should really study reality. Like, even when I go on vacation, so I went to like uh, Hong Kong and Japan last year, which are primarily cities. I would still take photographs, I would still take note of scenery in the city just to basically just get a glimpse of the world around me, right? Just to understand how even like, uh, like especially when it comes to grays, like uh, when you're dealing with cities, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, grays and just not a lot of colors for you to uh, play around with. So like, it is a real test to see the nuances of different grays in the city. Um, and if you're really attentive, um, and why are you coloring eyes with purple or red? That's a different story. I'll, I'll finish my thought and I'll go on that. Um, so, um, when it comes to just going out and studying cityscapes and stuff, or just any anywhere else, just bring a sketch pad, maybe bring, bring a watercolor palette with brushes, like those portable watercolor brushes, and just really study everything that you see. And eventually you'll start to see that there's a lot of things that are harm naturally harmonious, in, and you'll be able to detect them pretty easily. Um, but you have to be really aware of it. Like, I know it, it might sound anti-fun because you're... If you're going on vacation or something, you really don't want to think about it. But like, it's it's one of those things where, um, like, if you're going to a new environment, it's such a great thing to like, like new places, new environments. It's su it's just really beneficial to just take some time, just take a day or two from your vacation and just really study and take in the new colors, new environments. Because every city, every place has their own unique um, color harmony and your color vision will improve by just expanding your library and just exposing yourself, thinking about what you're seeing around. Um, okay, so how do you, how did you tr uh, improve traditional materials? Um, so, I w <laughs> the, the, the obvious answer is you just keep drawing, really. It's actually a cop-out answer, but you just have to do it, right? But, um... One thing I will mention is that a lot of people get into the trap of, like, they just kind of mindlessly, mind-numbingly, just, uh... Oh, I asked... We're studying... Oh, improve with traditional... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I just do uh, do studies with traditional materials. Um, So, like, uh, one, one thing to note is that traditional materials, obviously, 
react differently based on the uh, based on which ones are used. So oil paints will mix differently than watercolors. Watercolors will mix slightly differently than gouache. So those things you just want to just um, you, you you pick your medium that you like and just do studies in reality, and you'll eventually get to a pretty good state. Like trust, there there are people who. Um, made careers out of just one traditional material that they're used to. And they're not, it's not just like oil paints, which is the traditional fine arts type of uh, stuff. But like, I've seen watercolor artists, I've seen like gouache artists. Um, you could be Banksy and just like, like graffiti walls and you might become big. Who knows, right? Like, so like, there, there's a lot of ways to really study. It's a matter of what you prefer and eventually and you have to adjust sort of your your perception of reality by by just studying it, and that's really it. Um, and yes, I do always. Rizuna asks, you always start with black and white, right? Yes, I do. Um, now you don't have to. Like, if you're really, if you're really, um, uh, if there's there's certain styles you don't have to do it. Um, so like, if you're doing like, I don't know, like cartooning, like let's do. Like My Little Pony of Steven Universe, chances are they're because they're such a color oriented like cartoon. They you they're most likely not going to deal with grayscale because grayscales are not the primary focus in those cartoons, right? So sometimes you don't really it's detrimental to focus on your grayscales, but like for a lot of different styles, yes, you should start with that. And I always do, even in my state where I'm a professional, it's just an insurance policy, right? Like if, if, uh, I don't want to screw up the grayscale step because it's really, like, it's really easy to, if you're just focusing on colors all the time. But yeah, like just, just, you're sort of just like, Cutting out all the options one by one, so you don't overload your brain with too many things. Especially when it comes to like character art and stuff, I I don't want to think about colors while I'm thinking about the posing, the anatomy, and all that stuff. If I take out the colors, then that's one less element to think about, so I can think more on the design and the character that I'm drawing at any given time. So yeah. Trust me, like, one, one thing I learned very quickly in, like, in school is human brains aren't as smart as we think we are. Like, we can only really think about, like, maybe one or two things at once. Uh, I don't, like, there might be studies saying, like, uh, maybe females are able to think more things at once than males. Which I don't know if is relevant, like, to art or not. Like, that they don't really have those types of studies. But... But, like, either way, like, the point is, like, no matter who you are, like, we can't overload our brains when it comes... And there's just so many things when it comes to art that will overload your brain. And it's, like... It's, like, you... Mo when it comes to art, you really want to just, like, cut out as many options as possible per step. Because what will happen is if you if you just think too many things at once, you're just gonna screw up something else. It's it's kind of it's kind of why is a long-winded answer as to why grayscale is is magnificent and what I always do. So um, for those who are just joining in, feel free to answer questions. Cause uh, ask ask questions. Cause uh, uh, I'll go as long as there's questions to interact with. Just cause I'm kind of sick, so I don't want to leave this stream for too. I don't want to stream for too long here. Just want to get get any outstanding questions or concerns out of the way. So. Uh, with Revy here, I'm kind of concerned about the face right now, cause uh, but that's something I could always just adjust as I go along, the expression and that sort of thing. 
So uh, if you're not too familiar with this character, it's, it's this character from Black Lagoon. So I, this is the second attempt I, I've done on this character on stream. Um, but, you know, it, it, sometimes it is better to just try the same thing twice just to get just so that you minimize any mistakes or any problems that may occur from your attempts. So yeah, you'll you'll find me a lot of times. I'll I'll be going over the face quite a bit, um, especially if you just if you watch my YouTube processes and stuff. The face can be it's not about really the technical side. Like once you get to a certain point, it's, it's never really about whether oh the face is technically correct. The, the, what I'm trying to go for here is I'm making sure that the face just looks right aesthetically, and that could take quite a while. Like sometimes it might might be like. It might take the majority of the process time, As, and I'm not even kidding. Like everything else in the picture could be like negligible compared to just getting the face right, or sometimes I just get the face right in the first try, and to each their own, right? So it, it's just a lot of times it's just like trial and error. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe something like that. Yeah, that that looks a lot better. So let we can start moving on to just adding a bit of color. So what I usually usually do is just um just give it a little bit of spark here. Now I don't really know what type of palette I want to go for. I could go for a red one like last time, like a purplish red one. Um, but we'll see what happens. What my mood is. I just like blue a lot. You'll you'll find me using a lot of blues. And it's just a preference thing. I would yeah, I would it, it heavily borrows from impressionism. Um just cuz like uh if if people don't watch my YouTube videos, what one thing I like to mention is that I I, I hate things looking too airbrushed because it I, I like the idea that people can see that it's a painting and it's like sort of like a wink wink nudge nudge thing, right? So like leaving brush strokes and that sort of thing is characteristic of Impressionism and yeah, that's what I like. And my mentality behind that is the reason why it's just if, if I made something that is too realistic then you might as well just get to hire somebody and take a photograph of them, right? So. For me, is like I just like the painterly feel, and not to say that there's anything wrong with just airbrush, like Call of Duty box art type of thing, but like for me, it's just it's just a different mentality. Like I, I just have a certain mentality when it comes to uh, paintings. So right now, I'm just gonna introduce some skin colors here. What what are they? prominent colors of uh, her design here so her hair is dark red so I'm just gonna add in some reds here um, and uh, as of last time as well I'm going to just introduce a few blues here just gonna just a little bit of grays so see the thing is the background is gonna be a very interesting one I'm not too sure what I want to do with that but Like something like that, maybe just a bit, little bit of blues in there. So like, uh, you'll see me using a lot of hue sliders. It might seem like it's cheating, but I'm keeping in mind like any traditional equivalents. So like, if you're doing traditional, um, hue sliders are akin to like having glazes in your piece, right? Um, so glazes are basically uh, thin layers of paint that uh, are a bit of is sort of a bit transparent, so you can see what's underneath it. So like, uh, you're basically color adjusting. Uh, when you're making using glazes in traditional, and that's something that uh, hue siders are basically doing. You're adjusting colors. You're not destroying your whole painting. You're you're just uh, changing the the um, some sometimes the temperature, sometimes just the hue that you're dealing with. 
and that sort of thing. And and of course, because it's digital, I can do it really quickly. So it it, it it's pretty is it's pretty convenient. Like I kind of so that's why you'll see me abuse it like quite a bit. Um, in any in any like master painting that you might see like from Rembrandt or like from William Bouguereau, you'll 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 know that they have to do a ton of glazes. So like. The final painting is not going to tell you exactly just how many hours it had to work on it. Just because, like, especially when it comes to oil paints, they have to wait for it to dry before they can put glazes on, before they can paint over it. So, so uh, any given painting will have a ton of glazes. And, of course, because we're doing digital, we don't have to wait for paint to dry. So we can just adjust colors right off the bat. So yeah, like I'm I'm not liking this palette. Like something even like this. Like just a little bit more purples. Oh, I I I played around with a lot of purples lately. I just It's just an interesting color for me. So might as well just continue. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm just gonna do a channel layer here, just so that I can introduce a bit more color into the piece. So as with a lot of uh, my work, uh, I like to just mix right on the canvas. So I just, when I do that, I need to have just colors present in the piece at any given time. Uh, just so that I have something to work with here. So yeah, if you're just joining in, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, there are some people who were here yesterday. Uh, so yeah, if you have any other questions, just feel free to ask me ask and uh i'll go as long as as i can i'm willing to just because i'm kind of, again i'm kind of sick and uh i guess i wanted to keep it a little bit um a little bit short here but i'll go as long as i need to answer questions So it was an accident, but I did like the uh, sharpness of her face. Like that, now obviously is a little bit exaggerated, but like it, it kind of gives a certain edge to her, no pun intended. So like that's something that that might appear it as an like just when I'm doing the process where I'm not intending for something, but it just kind of kind of looks right. Thank you, Ario. Yeah, it's. Color Army is one of those things where, like, people kind of overthink it, and a lot of times it's because they're... So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about Color Harmony really quickly, just because I feel like it's... Like, you, you asked... I think you you or someone else asked a question where, what are the common mistakes some beginners make? Um, I didn't go over this because I kind of ran out of time, but color when it comes to coloring, a lot of times, like, Color Harmony isn't as bad as people think it is. You're just looking to... Harmon harmonize throughout the process rather than screwing yourself up early. So, for example, what I mean by this is a lot of beginners would just be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting color phase, guys. Guys and gals. Like, I'm just, you know, I'm just going to put down colors here. But the problem with, like, this sort of approach... I, now I'm exaggerating it, of course, but, like, the problem with this approach is that you're screwing yourself up throughout the process. So the moment you're starting to add colors, you're putting all these really strong, saturated colors, which are extremely hard to deal with, right off the bat. So you're sort of like re trying to reverse engineer. You're trying to fix your painting as you're going along once, once you screw it up the moment it happens, right? So when I'm doing colors, I'm making sure that no matter what step I'm at, I'm going to progressively screw it up. I'm not just starting off by using the big, like, Sort of like putting my, all my chips on the table right off the bat. So like all these colors right now, these are very harmonious. Might be too harmonious. It's a little bit boring, right? But maybe later on I'll start adding more and more powerful colors so that I'm progressing towards the powerful stuff rather than starting off by screwing it up. So it's actually not as bad as people think it is, but like people kind of kind of play themselves a lot of times. So it's like just be very careful when you're when you're dealing with the process of coloring. Like no master painter, if you ever study Rembrandt, if you study any William Bouguereau paintings and stuff, like you study their step by steps, they always play it very safe, and then they progressively take risks. So like, it's one of those things where like 
Um, it's a very simple idea, very simple mentality, but for some reason, people love to just slam colors down for, like, right from step two, and I don't know why, but it, it's just kind of funny, but, you know, it's, it's whatever. That's, yeah, so yeah, that, that's something that happens quite a bit. That's an extension to the question from yesterday. Just people making the, a very common mistake when it comes to color. Yeah, and so like the the reason why is so so like it, it, I I can go back to the uh, to my example of Steven Universe and My Little Pony and like just cartoons in general, right? Um, the reason why they can go directly into color a lot of times is because they have character sheets, right? They have councils of people, art directors, who approve of a certain design, right? So they already know the colors, but like if you're going into a painting. A lot of times you don't have that luxury, right? Even if I'm doing fan art, I'm not just copying, like, color picking from official art here. So, like, you don't want to take those same risks that you might do on My Little Pony because, in essence, like, if you're working on a, an animation, you already have the reference points to work with. So, like, yeah, a lot of people kind of just borrow that mentality from anime and cartoons. And they're like, oh, man, if they're just putting Goku's color right off the bat then I can do it too, right? But that's really not the case. It's, uh, it's, it, it is a, like, a bad habit that a lot of people have, um, because they want to, and a lot of times too, it's just because, like, people want to just go direct to colors because they're, they don't want to deal with the boredom of the boring steps, whereas, like, you're just, you're just, like, testing stuff out. You're, like, so in this case, like, this would be considered boring just because nothing's too flashy, it's very safe, that sort of thing. So, like, it, it's one of those things where you you want to be patient with your approach. You want to be patient. Mm, I don't like the shoulder axis. I could probably so so if I'm going to do this, I can maybe change these shoulders to something like that so that it balances off. Makes it a bit more interesting to look at. Um, the safest way to... Uh, so Rinzinha asks, how do you know the first colors you chose are matched to the base color? Because you said you move safely and all. So the, the, the easiest way is to play with uh, something called anal analogous colors. So um, I'll even bring a color wheel. I'll just, I'll just copy and paste a color wheel from the internet here. Um, okay, this, this is extremely basic, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to use it just to show my point. So, if you're not too familiar, like, if you're not an English speaker, you might not know the term, because it's just because it's a fancy word. Analogous colors means that, um, you're playing with colors side by side. So, like, uh, for example, if you're playing a safe, like, if, so right now I'm, my palette is basically around this area, right? So it's red, purple, that sort of thing. You know for sure if you're playing with colors beside each other on the color wheel that they're going to be harmonious no matter what. Um, uh, barring a few exceptions. So like if I am... But th those are few and far in between, right? So if you're just playing with colors that, who are, which are side by side, then you should be fine, right? When it becomes a problem, when it becomes destroyed, it is if you're starting to hit towards the opposite end. So stuff like if I use uh, grays, in comparison to reds and purples, that's starting to move away from the colors, right? And of course, if I start, like, maybe putting in greens, blues, that sort of thing, they, these would be considered risky relative to... Oh, my God. So, like, if I, if I use these colors right here, these would be relatively risky if my base colors would be, like, these reds and purples. So, it's something I've kind of subconsciously kind of taken into account. But, um, yeah, it, it, that would be the really technical way of talking about color harmony. Um, the, far, the, the, the farther you go away from 
their saturation, like the, the more the saturation differences are, the more likely it becomes uh, um, disharmonious, like it, it becomes distorted. So like, uh, for instance, uh, right now, this whole piece right now is a bit towards the uh, the grayer end of purples and reds here. But let, let's say I just want to do this. Let's, let's say I, I, I'm going to slam, I, I don't know, I'm just going to slam it on her, her, her um, tank top. Then, yeah, like, relative to the rest of the piece here, it's kind of, like, disjointed, right? But let's say my whole piece is hypothetically very saturated. It looks bad, but... Then if I put this down, it doesn't look as, um, as disjointed because the whole... The relative to the entire piece, the, uh, the red is no longer standing out too much, right? So it all comes down to context. Color is relative to each other. So yeah, like it's just it, the very basic idea beca behind color harmony is just I'm playing with colors beside each other, and I'm I only start to deviate away from that when as I progress and I realize I need uh, I need certain things in the piece. So um, so like some some deviations, a lot of times you'll see from with my style is that I start adding reds to the cheeks, like redder stuff. To the cheeks and the nose of the the character, so uh, so that those sort of things will be where I will start be start adding a bit more color. Um, now Revy as a character is not as colorful as others, so um, I do have to take into account like how would I find ways to make her? Uh, how would I add some saturations to the piece here? I think I same, made the same mistake before, but I didn't put her her leather strap on her um, on her shoulders. So I'm trying to find the perfect axes here. Yeah, it's, it's all about feeling, really. It's like again, like you're. You're kind of like taking risks as you go along, but you wouldn't know what those risks are until you have a feeling that you could take it, right? It's sort of like, like if you ever play the stock market or do like gamble or something. Again, like you don't want to put the, all the chips on the table from like round one or something, because if you lose, if you your bet is off, then like you're just trying to fix. You're trying to you're trying to fix what you screwed up in the beginning. So like. So, like, I'm going by as... I'm sort of, like, kind of slowly heading towards the painting that I want. I'm not trying to take any... I'm not trying to make any moves that would just completely mess up the painting right off the bat. So, um... So, like, as I get more... Uh, as I start to establish more, I'll, I'll start having more of these feelings. And once I have those feelings, I can start uh, knowing where to take... Uh, to, to put more colors and where not to put colors, right? So, just just be very wary. Just be very aware of what you do. That's all I'm saying. A lot of people just screw up their paintings before they even start. That's really my point. Uh, if there's one point to take during this stream. On a side note, it's sort of like... Uh, my latest YouTube video, like, a lot of people kind of just put pressure on themselves and, like, when they screw up and stuff, and, like, uh, the reason why people have that feeling, that feeling in art is because, like, they know they have to take responsibility for stuff that, for the big mistakes that they do, so, it's one of those things, yeah, like, just, just don't screw it up on round one and you won't, you can't, yeah, you can't rush the process, as you mentioned. Yeah. Trust me, it's not COVID, but <clears throat> just a little bit sick here, but I should be fine. So one thing as I... Um, as I work on this, I start to kind of envision what her face could look like. 
I'm, I really like the sharp silhouette. There's something about her character, if you ever watched Black Lagoon or read it, um, very edgy, very confident, that sort of character. And just having her look sharper silhouette-wise is actually really cool. Again, it's an accident. I didn't expect this to work, but you you take advantage of any like random stuff that could appear to the piece. It's kind of the reason why I, I hate the mentality where people say, oh, female faces are always going to be more round or something, right? It's, it's, there's some truth to that, but not always. And definitely not for certain types of characters. So, like, uh, do you, there are stereotypes, but you want to break them when, whenever it's necessary. I could put her face in shadow on the side here. Um. Well, this piece is kind of purple. This is a very grayed out purple. But it is a purple. The, the reason why I don't really like using purple um is because it can look very unnatural so like um it, it's just it's just my my take like uh, there, if you think about what exists in well, let's say if you think about blues right blue is skies can be very blue um water that sort of thing so it looks very natural right think about reds oranges i mean yeah, yeah I, I could say reds oranges yellows that sort of thing like, you get sunlight, you have flowers, that sort of thing, right? But purple is said to be very artificial. Um, so, it gives a certain feeling the moment you use it. So, like, um, it, like, obviously depends on context of color language, but if you're, yeah, like, if you're, like, uh, it's kind of why I get very hesitant on using purples, because... Like, when you think about artwork that uses purples a lot of times, it is a rare color, exactly. Ariel uh, mentions it perfectly. Um, purples are very rare in nature. There's some flowers that might be purple, but in general, it's more likely an artificial thing. There's a reason why purples in the past was, like, just super prestigious colors that peasants can't wear. It's because it's so expensive to create that purple. So, um... It is royalty color, yes. So, so like... For me, I'm just very careful with when to use purples, just because it, it just gives a certain vibe to it. That, like, if you think about artwork that utilizes purples a lot, a lot of times the the reason why purples get used in like, let's say Magic: The Gathering, if you ever played Magic cards and stuff, um, a lot of times uh, swamp creatures are purple, like just really monstrous type of things, or like aliens. Just because they're out of uh, they're, they're out, uh, outer worldly, so like purples, yeah, it can be used for fantasy. So like uh, again, like if you look in uh, um, Magic: The Gathering, like a lot of the swamp, like the uh, the black, um, the the, uh, the black card. Is, it sounds a little bit weird, but yeah, the, the swamp cards they would use a lot of purple. Yeah, so it's uh, it's one of those colors where um, you're. Uh, you have to save it for certain contexts. And, like, if you use it on somebody, then it better have a good reason because it kind of stands out really quickly that otherwise wouldn't. So, yeah, like, just... I should use more purples. I should. Yeah, let's just put it that way. But I, I, I save those situations in very rare cases. In this case, uh, the reason why I'm using purple, like, grays is because I, I kind of just like it. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I will say I didn't really like the Spirit Away one. I started, I, I learned a lot from it, but I, I shouldn't, I, I feel like I shouldn't have posted it because it's one of my weaker works. Um, I definitely could do better, but it, it kind of taught me a lot about certain things.
Um, so, yeah, I, I do like a lot. I, I do. I am trying to incorporate more color into my work because it's been a common criticism of mine where a lot of my work is uh, very gray and stuff. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I'm not saying it was a bad work. It was just like it was kind. Of, I, I feel like I could do better, and whenever I think I can do better. Um, especially for something as, like Ghibli stuff where like I really want to make it work uh, since I really like their movies and stuff so um, I feel like I could do better I'm probably going to do another Spirit of Way piece eventually like or very soon rather just so that I can have that sort of revenge like, I, like sort of revenge on, on the piece that I didn't really like um, so it's one of those things where So I am just trying to... Yeah, there's something about the shark face. It, it, it kind of looks like One Piece. Like, a lot of the One Piece characters, if you watch the anime or have read it, the manga, very exaggerated uh, facial features and stuff, and, and features in general. So, like, there's a lot of really fun stuff you can do when you just play around with it. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really the colors. Like, I learned a lot about the colors, which... In the end, I use those colors for different other pieces, as you might have noticed. But the composition, I wasn't too fond of. Like, I, I feel like I could do a lot better if I'm putting... Like, there's always going to be co uh, problems when you're putting characters like uh, Chihiro and Haku in there. Um, just because their, their color palettes are so different from each other. But for sure, I could have done better compositionally on how I would arrange them. So it's, it's one of those things where... Uh, it's not the colors, no, it's not, like, you, you, like, um, the, the vibe of it, like, the color vibe and, like, how it, it, it shows, it kind of has a really nice feeling, but, like, I was not liking the composition, and I kind of figured it out afterwards, but I just, yeah, it's one of those things where, I'll, 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 I'll do it again, but I'll, I'll definitely make it better than before, when I have a bit more time and I'm feeling a little bit better, but... So one consideration here is, uh, am I really going to make her smile, or am I making her not smile? So like that's just, that's actually a big consideration, but I'm leaning towards a smile because it's Revy. So I will probably shadow her face out on the end there, just. Just because this place, nobody needs to look at that. It's whatever. It's just negligible. So like, you might as well just might, might as well just shade it out, like blur it out, sort of thing. It's catching attention for no reason. I'm trying to figure out. I'll most likely show a little bit. Like if if I, if I just end it off like this, it kind of makes it look a little bit naked here. Um, just a weird vibe, so I'm just gonna maybe add, exaggerate her. Yeah, yeah. She she is wearing a, um, what was it? The hoisters for the, her guns. So like, uh, just bringing it up, up a little bit will kind of make her not look as naked. <laughs> just it, it's one of those things. Like, just weird cutoff points. If you want that type of artwork of Revy, I'm sure you'll find a lot of them online, but like, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. Not liking her smile, but I do like this, like, I do like her smiling. I've stated before, I really dislike tattoos. Um, I'll most likely just foobar it. Um, not gonna really... Like... Even, like, within the manga, if you've ever read it, like, they, they kind of, like, screw it up every so often. But it's, it's, tattoos are one of those things where it's just... Really annoying to get consistently. So, like, I, I would most likely just, like... As long as it resembles sort of what she has on her arm, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to care, it's whatever.
I'm making sure her face uh, face silhouette is uh, the same, even though I'm adding the lips and nose and stuff. So I'm I'm definitely going for a sharper look. Um, this is not something I usually do because a lot of my females that I draw are very feminine and uh, more rounded in shapes. But this time around, because it is a different character, I really like the I really like that sort of look, um, the sharper edges to her. Now I am going to have to be very careful about the neck attachment. I mentioned this yesterday in the patron stream, uh, but I have to make sure that uh, the anatomy is correct here. So like, her neck is like that. Um, shoulder, I could even just bring it back a little bit more. Um, exaggerate her breast area a bit. And now I need to, I would have to imagine the, the the curvature of her center lines would be something here, here. So like her cleavage area would be like that. Um, so like it might seem very minor, but like having it here would ruin the perception of structure and volume. So like that is something that is that that's something that a lot like uh, like those subtleties like really make a difference. Like uh, you really want to be careful if you're you're like uh, you're drawing characters like this. Um, you need uh, if you if you ever know about like animation like uh, and that sort of thing, you realize that you need to really be careful about where you put your center lines uh, or any indications of it. So like uh, again, like cleavage is like one of the the many ways that you can indicate a center the center line of a character. So like if if I screw up that uh, the the cleavage there, that would have been very problematic for the perception of this character. And it'll, 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 it'll kind of change the entire structure of it, and it's not really something I'm looking to do. Yeah. Not even stiff. Like, stiffness is one thing, but, like, just being wrong is another thing, right? If, if again, like, if, if, the, if the, the cleavage line was just in an awful spot, then, like, you're just destroying the, the structure, and everything will just look off. Like, what, one thing you have to know about art is like how dangerous it is to leave mistakes because like one mistake will make it seem like another thing is a mistake right so like if if the breath the, the, the cleavage line is off then is the cleavage off or is the neck off that's what viewers will have to perceive as right is the so like that sort of thing can be very snowball-y which is why like art like when when it's good art is when people don't notice anything bad about it um like like if you like it's sort of like if you watch a bad movie right like uh, like with bad cinematography and that sort of thing you'll notice it immediately but what happens when a movie has good cinematography all right like let's, let's, let's say like christopher nolan movies or something um i'm sure some people would have heard of tenet or the new movie trailer that i'm kind of excited for that but yeah but the point is nolan movies like great cinematography like, you don't really, like, you, you might say, oh, that looks really cool, but, like, in general, like, when it's good cinematography, you notice the story more so than the actual, like, technical side of things. Because it's so good that you get drawn into it, right? So that's the exact same with illustration and that sort of thing. One mistake will completely ruin it, but, like, what, if, you, if you get everything right, or relatively right, then people can more focus on the message and the story, and that sort of thing, right? So, like, um, it, it's just very dangerous to hold mistakes uh, in, in art, or make mistakes. You're always going to be judged on um, your, your biggest uh, mistakes in the piece. You're always going to be judged on your worst. And it, it sounds really bad, but... That's how it goes in the professional world. Like you're in in your portfolio, like you have to make sure that everything is just like as clean as it could possibly be, because like the secret to uh, I'm going off topic. I just wanted to talk about random stuff, but like you're you're most likely going to be judged when you're when you're being hired on your worst work rather than your best work. And again, it goes back to something I talked about yesterday. Um, Employers know that you're not going to be at your best every single time. You're not going to make masterpieces every single day. Um, in fact, masterpieces would be pretty rare. So, like, when they're judging your portfolio, they're going to look for your worst work. Because they know that, let's say it's a rainy day, 
um, you just broke up your, with your girlfriend or boyfriend type of thing, and you still have to go to work. So, like, you're judged on what you can produce when that sort of thing happens to you. So, like, that's why employers will always judge you on the worst work that you have in your portfolio. So make sure your worst work is really good. That's really it. Like, if anybody really checks out my site, uh, uh, my, like, my, my main site, like, artofchild.com, like, I would rotate a lot of my pieces very often, just so that, um, because w when I create more pieces, then the worst piece, uh, like, something else becomes the worst piece, right? So, like, um, it, it's one of those things where, um, you're, you're looking to constantly just eliminate the weakest link. Uh, every single time and that's how eventually you'll get to the point where all your pieces are solid enough that you can get a job somewhere that you want so oh her glove is wrong here I'm sorry I'm like half thinking about her like how thick would be her shoulder I'm, I could make it a little bit thicker here I was like receding it but I'm like this is not working um get a few fingers here as well so again I'm not really looking to be perfect uh, with her design but I do need to have her at least resemble the character I'm drawing so like for instance like the main the big value shifts like stuff like that I would have to place and then I would in most cases I would try to get reference of somebody holding a pistol but I'm just going to like kind of fudge it here just because I don't want to waste time getting more reference I, I can sort of fudge it to some some extent here just because uh, it's I, I've drawn a lot of people holding guns so but if you really want to be authentic about it you really want to get as much reference as you can um, so I'm trying to think. I'm trying to look at the design right now. What else do I have to worry about? Um, I am noticing that I could bring it a bit higher here, just because uh, that's what the official art is. I can even just give a hint of the pants, right? Yeah, like something like that might be more towards what her character looks like. I'm not liking the structure on the uh, breast area here. Now that I changed. A few things, so I will. Yeah, sometimes I will make a new layer and just um, just redline it, um, just so I don't, I don't keep finicking over stupid stuff here. So, so her her breasts are pretty big, so like I do have to con take that in consideration. That even even if she's turning to one side, that it's kind of, it kind of looks like a frontal view here. So. Something, it's something like that, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna clean line it, but, and then, yeah, shoulder. Mm, yeah, it's a little bit broken, so that's a mistake. Yeah, could could do something like that, maybe. This can be, like that. So I'm trying to think if the shoulders are working here. I'm 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 not really liking it. I could even exaggerate it a bit more. Yeah, it might be that. Um so what I'm trying to do, I'm exaggerating the the shoulder. Yeah, I, I think that looks better. So that's something that might occur when you're redlining um that uh, otherwise would be hidden when you're rendering. So Something to think about whenever, like sometimes you just have to go back and just really uh, clean up a few things. Just, just do a red line, just to see if something is working here. Yeah, that looks a lot better. But now I'm, I'm considering just uh, the hair is not really helping the silhouette here, so I'll probably do something like this. Um, before I had the hair loop all the way around, but at this point I, I feel like it's killing the silhouette. So that's something again that you might uh, you might have uh, established uh, throughout the piece, and you kind of figure out as you go along. 
So it's ever changing. A lot like uh, if, if you're hard lined on like on certain on certain um, line art, it's the reason why I try my best not to have clean line art. You don't want to hold yourself to any changes. Like if it, if it's gonna help you, then just just do it. Like and like clean line art kind of puts you into a sort of really bad position where you can't really make as many changes because you're you you risk screwing up what you established. So for me, it's like having rougher rougher sketches can open that up. I'm gonna fix a tattoo sometime, but like that, I I don't like the shapes on that. But mm, I'm trying to think if there's a way to uh, change the temperature of the piece to something more interesting here. Do I really want to go back to blues? Probably not. I could I could extend the the contrast a little bit more. Could even lower the blues. Maybe make it a little bit redder, yellower. The skin could be a little bit bluer. That type of thing. Yeah, so what what I'm trying to establish here right now is that I'm not really liking the... There's there's not enough uh, contrast between the background and the foreground when it comes to the the color temperature, so I'm, I'm, I'm a bit hesitant on this color palette right now. But I'm not too sure what I would do. Um, Just testing something, don't worry. How bad it looks. I'm not liking that either. Hmm. There's something about the background. I'll have to think about it. There, ha there has to be something more interesting going on. Yeah, this is where I would play around with a lot of, a lot of, um, hue sliders just so that I'm making sure there's something that looks somewhat correct here, or looks more exciting, rather. This is a little bit more exciting, uh, I mean, I could do, I think that there, there could be possible changes, but... It could even just be a value thing. It might not even be a color thing. So it's something that I'll be very, very careful about. Um, but um, so I, I have to take it into consideration right now how shiny her tank top is. It seems like in all the art that I'm looking at, the official art, that her tank top is kind of shiny. So I would need to put some specular highlights, which are like the... It is a fancy term for the really shiny parts of her area. Now, the reason why I'm establishing this a little bit earlier than usual is because this shine here could potentially uh, change the balance of the overall piece. Um, and you want to establish any extreme like changes in value as early as possible in order to uh, ensure that you're not you're not. I, I, I don't want to make the entire piece, finish the entire piece, and then later on be like, "Oh, I need this," and then it's like, "Oh crap!" Like the entire piece got bounced around, not having there it there. So, yeah, that's always something. Like as I'm doing fan art, I would always have to consider, like, just go back to design and see if there's anything I'm missing that would kind of make the character read a little bit better. Um, it's kind of one of the reasons why I really like doing originals a lot more. Um, which is, uh, not, I, I guess it's not a sentiment that is shared with a lot of people, but, um, for me, it's like, I definitely like original stuff just cause I can, I can just make up stuff as I go along and people, people won't be as, uh, 
unforgiving to any possible mistakes. Like, even the tattoo here, I'm gonna have to think about this one. Um, not really liking that, but... I'm not liking this forearm here, so I'm gonna freaking cheat this. I'm I'm trying to think about the angles, the angle of the gun towards her. Um, so so uh, I'll, I'll mention it very briefly. I'm not liking the dynamic of. Um, this and this is a little bit too similar angle angle wise so what i'm looking to do is uh i'm looking to do uh, just give a bit more difference so that her face and this is a little making a bit more interesting shape here um those are the really really minute stuff that that really tests my limits in terms of how to think about her pose and stuff that looks a lot better, yeah. It's one of those things where just slight changes could really add so much to it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. this yeah, this, of course the smoke has to change. Perhaps even I'll even shorten the pistol a little bit. Just so that it's not... Yeah, yeah, something like that. Just so that... Um, so one, one thing I have to consider is that the hair might be in tangent with the gun here. So, uh, any, any changes to the hair, I'll have to be really careful when it comes to the gun as well. It's another reason why I don't have clean line art. Like, it's, like, again, it's one of those things where sometimes shapes just appear as you color, and you wouldn't notice it until you actually color it. And, like, um, yeah, it... it now that's not to say line art is bad, like clean line art. I'm not gonna hate you if you just start off with like the cleanest, like Joe Mad, comic line art possible. But the way I work, it's like I, I just like figuring things out as I go along. This looks a lot better than my previous version of Remy, a uh, Revy. I can actually, uh, I I would most likely post this one. Yeah, this one this one looks so much better. Like if you if you tune in late, um, this is a second take on Revy from Black Lagoon. So like, my first take didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. So like, I am trying different things here. Just, and I'm I'm happy at least like the second try turned out well because like, sometimes it might take me like three plus tries just to get something right. A lot of people like kind of like. Not not to, to toot my own horn, but like some sometimes like fans would come up to me and co at conventions and be like, "Oh my god, you're so loose!" It's like it seems like you're not even trying, and things kind of look look good. But like in reality, like the reality is, I I, tr I try, man. Like it, it's like I, I try a lot. Like it's some sometimes things don't don't look right on the first try or even the second try. So like a lot of the stuff that you see that I'm being that are being posted, what sometimes I would be dumping like maybe five paintings before I reach something that looks good. Um, it depends on the content that I'm making. So like so like if you ever feel bad about making mistakes and stuff, like don't don't worry about it because like everybody makes mistakes. If like even like someone like Picasso when he was alive, like he there's a lot of paintings that he wouldn't be showing because he would deem as inferior for his skill level. So, like, it's one of those things where, like, like, uh, even when I was uh, considered an amateur, like, I would think too much of the professionals and expect them to be, like, these angels of perfection when it comes to art. But in reality, like, even the professionals would have, like, they, they would struggle a lot to just get that one good painting and stuff. So, like, um... Yeah, Picasso changed his style quite a bit. Like, um, he's a good example of somebody... Like, I talk about this in some of my uh, Coffee Grind tutorials. I like to use Picasso a lot because he's one of those people that... Um, he could legit paint better than a lot of people. But then he, he he's remembered for his wacky, like, crazy style. But he's actually an insane painter. Um, 
It's just that, like, if you're ever looking to do, like... It's, it's a good lesson in the art to learn the rules before you break them. Uh, because his wacky work only got better because he was such a great painter. painter. But nowadays, a lot of people kind of look at Picasso and other artists and be like, well, if he's wacky, then I'm just going to be wacky as well, right? But they don't learn the rules. They Like, if you see what earlier paintings of paint, uh, Picasso looked like, you realize just how good of a painter he is. It's just that he wasn't catching attention for his... Uh, his era, so he was like, screw it, I'm just gonna do some wackier stuff, and his friends around him were doing wackier stuff as well, um, so like, uh, so like, basically my point is just, um, he, he's a, like, he, he's a good example of someone that you should look up to, because he's the quintessential artist of learning every fundamental before he went into the stuff that made, that defined him, so... Like, who knows, right? Like, who, who knows where your style will end up? But don't start off by just going for the style, if that makes sense. Like, it's, it's a huge mistake, so I'll make some mistake that a lot of people make. Um, so, just my little rant on, on Picasso. He's, he's a fantastic artist. He was a fantastic artist, so... Just don't, like, learn off of him directly. Like right off the bat, because you're gonna you're gonna be very sad when you realize you have none of the fundamentals that he did. So at this point, like I feel like this painting has again I, I say this every single time, but like this painting has a lot of potential, and I would most likely just end the stream right here because I'm losing my voice from being sick. But if there's any other questions right now, just let me know. Uh, before I end the stream, because I'm, I just want to get it over with. <laughs> so, like, if you have any questions regarding this painting or like, uh, uh, whatever you're doing, like, if you want me to do a quick paint over, I, I'm, I don't mind doing that. I just don't want to stay too long right now. This is looking really nice. I'm actually liking this one. Took two tries, but at least it's it's something. Yes, I could. Uh, which painting do you want me to paint over? Before you, uh, before you choose here, uh, I, I want to mention that I'm considering... Like, I don't know about you guys and gals, but I'm considering uh, moving the open to everyone stream to uh, Twitch.tv. Because uh, I know a lot of people have accounts on Twitch, and that might probably be better as a platform for people. So, um, if there's objective, uh, objections to me moving to Twitch, I don't mind that. Now that I, I see that there might be people that, uh, don't want to use Discord. Like, I kind of got comments on that, uh, from other people where they don't really want to use Discord to come here for streams. But the patron streams, the patron-only streams, I'll continue doing it here just because it's a lot easier to deal with, uh, who is a patron and who isn't than some, something like on Twitch. Yeah, I like I like this one. I like this one. This is uh, this is something. Uh, sometimes, like a, a lot of times, like if I don't if I don't like the painting, I would I would just not complete it. But like, yeah, this this one definitely has a lot of potential. Um, in fact, it's very close to completion. If I if I were to be really honest with you, so. Um, yeah, like, if there's any questions, just let me know. If you, if you want me to paint over something just really quickly, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, I don't want to stay too long here. Um, just want to take a break, honestly. It's a Sunday. I have a lot of work, honestly. Um, just got several gigs, so... So let me know now. One thing I'll probably work on 
off stream is just the uh uh the the uh, the stomach area here but that that's for later um omega since you're uh you're a pa patron anyways is not like the patron stream will still be here so you'll still have you'll, you'll get the best of both worlds i guess um There was another desert landscape of mine that you painted over in Art, art Cave. Um, did you want to paint over it again? Or did you want me to paint over somebody else's work? Or I don't know, like what's... Yeah, if there's anybody who wants their artwork painted over, let me know. I don't mind doing it. It's just that I need, I, I, my, my hard line is just like, if people have to give me permission, I don't want to just like pick a random one just because like, it might be infringing on their, their personal like preferences. So j yeah, I'm, I would be, I would be more than happy to paint whatever. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll go over Ariel's desert landscape again, just because it's a pretty good lesson. I'll give it a minute. <laughs> Alright, no takers, though. Okay, I'll... I'll have to screw up for the desert landscape. Okay, so you, yep, yeah, you, you painted, you, you, you took into consider, consideration my, my critiques here. So I'll, I'll end the stream off of, uh, so this is Ariel's work. Um, I did do a very, very quick paint over, um, uh, quick paint over, uh, in the Art Cave channel here, and, uh, he, he or she, I don't, I'm not going to assume, um, took the painting and then, uh, okay, he, yeah, so, so you, he took the painting and then, uh, he uh, took the, some of the crit, uh, critiques and then just painted this version, which is a lot better, by the way, like, I'm trying to feel the atmospheric perspective and that sort of thing, um, my, my only real concern is that there are some, uh, he, there are some uh, issues when it comes to the tangents. Um, this is something I didn't mention in the previous, in the previous critique, but like, um, I, be very wary about the shapes that you create. So like stuff like this, this point uh, between like this, this kind of help kills a lot of the depth, right? So like, what you would do is that design wise, you would even like just bring it back down, or you could even bring it back up, like something like that. And then just like, sort of like do something like this, just so that um, uh, the I think the rock would be a bit lighter because if it's uh if it's shining if there's light here then you're most likely going to have uh I'll just exaggerate the shadows here just so that I have a better frame of reference here, something like that. Oh, I'm gonna just overlay it. Like, if, if there's a way to introduce, like, more saturated colors or something, that would be great. Just because in the foreground, it would be nice to have a, a little bit more difference in saturation from, from foreground to background. Uh, background, you can leave as very desaturated because it is a background, right? So, like, as you can see, like, uh, the point is, what my point is, like, you can see how this immediately makes it so that there's a feeling of depth based on the drawing. It's not really about the colors now. It's more like, now that I took out the tangent it looks like there's a real overlap here and that makes that pushes the feeling of depth uh, just a little bit more um uh there there's possibility of even like i there there's some like for me is like i just feel like there needs to be some sort of interesting saturations going on like even just adding a bit of red like a lot of times you might see if you if you go i not to say i'm a mountain hiker or anything but like if you go uh, check mountainous scenes. Um, 
there's going to be a bit of red to the distance. Uh, from it, it, hard to explain why, but just just think of it as atmosphere. So even just having a little bit of clouds in the background here. Uh, um, I'm not so so another tangent that I I kind of did I kind of glossed over in the previous critique was this one. Uh, you can tangent with the edge of the canvas, which is a big no-no in design. Which is why, like, in my previous uh, critique, I made sure that I cut it out there. Something like that. Um, just because it, it was taking away from your composition. So you could flip it over just to see. Like, here, I, I, I already feel there is a much better sense of depth. You could even bring a bit more darker colors back into the rock in the fort. In the background here, um, that sort of thing. But overall, it's really nice. Um, um, environments can be very uh, daunting, so don't don't feel like, especially since I like from what I've seen, you you like to put characters a lot in your work. So it just might be something that's just new to you. So it's like don't worry too much about it. This is a fantastic. Uh, yeah, yeah. But honestly, like if you like. It is my weak spot as well, but I have done environment uh, concept art professionally, uh, like to some extent. I'm not like I wouldn't say it's my forte, but I can do it. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. But um, it, it's always good to work on your weak spots. But like you can make a career out of just not doing stuff that is that you're weak at. If that makes sense, right? You won't a you won't ask Frank Frazetta for like a super epic uh, environment painting or. Or, like, you won't ask, like, uh, Yoji Shinkawa for the same thing. Or you won't, like, there are artists that are just going to be better at certain things. And sometimes, yes, it is good to work on your weak spots. But, um, basically my point is, like, you don't have to. And, uh, um, yeah, sometimes it's just, uh, you can just accelerate your learning on what you're strong at. And just go with that if you want to make it a career. So, like, yeah, the, the, I actually kind of like the dark sky around here, something like that. Even making it a bigger shape would be pretty cool, that sort of thing, but... Yeah, like, now, right now it's just minimal color things and, like, uh, he, and the tangents. Really be careful about where your the designs of the, uh, the mountains and the stuff that you put down. Because, like, uh, big misconception is just, like, this is, this was another tangent, by the way, if you didn't notice, uh, it was starting to edge to, uh, hit the edge of the canvas, and it was a big nodal, um, another, another design thing, but yeah, one, one of the things a lot of people make the mistake about is just, like, they, they think mountains are kind of easy, but then, the thing with mountains is that you really have to test your knowledge on composition, because, Remember, mountains can be whatever shapes that you really need need it to be, right? Like, if you need, again, this rock needed to be this shape, make it this shape, right? But when you have that power, a lot of people make the mistake of just not using that to your advantage, and then you start making mistakes in terms of design. Um, obviously, if you're doing, like, something like a character, I find characters very uh, interesting because you're kind of limited by how they look, right? I can't break arms just to make the composition better. Whereas, like, mountains, right? Mountains, you can always change the shape of the mountains just to make it just a little bit better. So you better make them really good, or else people are going to notice immediately, and then you're like, why didn't you make this mountain this shape type of thing? But, you know, um, but yeah, that, that's really my point. Like, at this point, like, all you have to do is just make sure that your shapes read well and... Uh, uh, you're good to go, honestly. This is not bad for, for something that is meant to be your weak spot. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Um, so for that, I said I wanted a shorter stream, but um, apparently it didn't end up like that. Um, it did go around that hour and a half. But, like, anyways, thank you for watching. Um, I will have the VOD ready for tomorrow, I think. I I'm really want to take a break today. So, um, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.